Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Bibbity Bobbity Books. My name is Ellie and this is going to be a reading vlog. So today is the 2nd of September and I wanted to start a little reading vlog because I've been in a bit of a reading slump and I'm just wanting to have a little bit of a reset in September because August just wasn't the one for me. I had a really, really busy August. Um, I was super busy in terms of my work life, also my personal life, and I was poorly for a little bit of August. And I just didn't really have time or have the headspace to do a lot of reading. I think I only finished about two books in August and I started like three different books and only got part way through and I just, I just haven't been feeling it. So I think what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of a breath and just start afresh in September. And I'm just going to put aside all of those books that I had started and haven't finished because they feel like they're looming over me. And I just feel like it'd be better to have a clean slate. We're just going to start again. New month, new me. <laughs> No, this is going to be a better month. I think it's going to be a little bit calmer. Um, we've got less plans and hopefully I'm going to have more room for reading. So anyway, that was a long way of me saying welcome to the vlog and I'm hopefully going to be doing a little bit more reading this month and I thought I would share the journey with you. Um, so yeah, let's kick things off. Um, in terms of my reading plans, I am going to do a bit of mood reading, so I'm not going to give you like a TBR right now, um, but I've got a lot of options because I saw my friend yesterday, um, he came round, we hung out and he brought round some books. Uh, we did a little bit of a book swap which was really cute. So he brought several books, most of which I haven't heard of before, um, that he thought that I might enjoy. Um, so I thought I'd share them with you now because I'll probably be dipping into these so that I can get them read and back to him. Um, but yeah, so the first one is Exit West uh, by Moshin Hamid. I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing any of these wrong because I literally haven't heard of these books before. Um, but yeah, that's this one. It says on the back here, um, it says that it's one of the year's most significant literary works. Um, and it says, all over the world, doors are opening. They lead to other cities, other countries, other lives. And in a city gripped by war, Nadia and Saeed are newly in love. Hardly more than strangers, desperate to survive, they open a door and step through, but doors only go one way. Once you leave, there is no going back. Um, so yeah, it sounds like kind of like a magical realism type book with a war setting. Not something that I would normally pick up, but sounds intriguing and is nice and short. Um, we've then got Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I feel like I've heard this title before. Um, I think it might be, is it a thriller? It says on the front that it is disturbing, inventive and exciting. What was lost in the collapse, almost everything, almost everyone, but there is still such beauty. One snowy night in Toronto, famous actor Arthur Leander dies on stage while performing the role of a lifetime. That same evening, a deadly virus touches down in North America. The world will ne never be the same again. 20 years later, Kirsten, an actress in a travelling symphony, performs Shakespeare in the settlements that have grown up since the collapse, but then her newly hopeful world is threatened. If civilization was lost, what would you preserve and how far would you go to protect it? Um, so yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, so I'm excited for that one. This one is a book that I have actually heard of before. This is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Um, so my friend knew that I was interested in this author um, and I've heard fantastic things about this book. All I know is that it is um, historical, but also has sci-fi elements to it because I believe our main character time travels. Um, so it says, in 1976, Dana dreams of being a writer. In 1815, she is assumed a slave. So I think she goes back in time to um, when slavery was a thing and I guess it's her experience of being in that time. I don't know, I've heard fantastic things about this author and I'm just very excited to check that one out. Uh, this one is Severance by Lin Ling Ma. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> um, no idea what this one is about. It says on the back it's a satirical spin on the end times, kind of like The Office meets The Leftovers interesting. Uh, and then the last one is American War by Omar L. Akkad. 
Again, I haven't personally heard of this one before. Um, so it says on the back, Sarat, born in Louisiana, is only six when the Second American Civil War breaks out in 2074, but even she knows that oil is outlawed, that Louisiana is half underwater, that unmanned drones fill the sky, and when her father is killed and her family is forced into a camp for displaced persons, she quickly begins to be shaped by her particular time and place until finally, through the influence of a mysterious functionary, she is turned into a deadly instrument of war. Intriguing. So those are all of the books that my uh, friend kindly lent me, so I'll probably be dipping into those in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then another couple of books that I wanted to mention that I am from my collection that I'm excited to start soon um, are Mythico Wood by Robert Holdstock. I think this one's going to be perfect for getting me into the spirit of all things autumn because I think it's very atmospheric, it's set in a wild wood and it's a sort of fantasy story with a dark element to it as far as I'm aware and all I know is that it's incredibly atmospheric and full of myth and mystery and that's just exactly the kind of vibe that I want to go for at the moment. And then another book that has been intriguing me on my shelves is Nod, written by Adrian Barnes. Um, I've heard some excellent things about this book. This is um, a sci-fi, um, it says on the back, dawn breaks over Vancouver and no one in the world has slept the night before or almost no one. A few people, perhaps one in 10,000 can still sleep and they've all shared the same golden dream. After six days of absolute sleep deprivation, psychosis will set in. After four weeks, the body will die. In the interim, panic ensues and a bizarre new world arises in which those previously on the fringes of society take the lead. Paul, a writer, continues to sleep while his partner Tanya disintegrates before his eyes and the new world swallows the old one whole. There's just so much about that blurb that intrigues me and I think this one sounds so interesting and it's not too long either. I think it's only uh, less than 300 pages so it could be quite a nice quick one too. So yes, those are a bunch of books that I will probably be dipping into in September and I'm excited to try things that are a little bit different to what I normally choose and I'm hoping that it's going to be a better reading month than August. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Anyway, um, I am going to go and settle down for the evening and start a new book um, but I thought I would share with you some footage from earlier today when I went out with some friends. We went to the garden centre which was really cute and then we went to the seaside and had a little paddle in the sea and it was just a really nice day and I got some um, footage so I thought I would insert that for you now. <laughs> so enjoy that b-roll and I will speak to you um, afterwards when I've got an update on what I choose to read.
Good morning everybody, it is the next day and I've just hopped outside for a little cup of coffee and to just try and wake myself up a little bit by getting some fresh air. But I wanted to just switch the camera on and let you know that I did start Nod. So this is the book about a global phenomenon that happens whereby pretty much everybody on planet Earth can't sleep. There's only a handful of people that can actually get to sleep at night. I think it's one in a thousand. And it's basically following the chaos that ensues following that because obviously there is global panic. You know, scientists have studied sleep and we know that the human body can only last something like 32 days without sleep before it literally just gives up and dies. And we also know that not sleeping for about six days leads to some kind of psychosis. People start to um, lose their mind, their kind of imagination or their dream state starts to leak into their reality or their living state, which is just terrifying. And so obviously there is a lot of panic and fear and stress going on and in this book we follow our main protagonist who is actually an author and he is actually one of the lucky few who can actually sleep at night and he dreams this really weird shared dream with all of the other people who can sleep um, and we follow him as he's watching his partner kind of slowly disintegrate before his eyes because she is one of these people that cannot sleep and yeah it's such a creepy and eerie concept and it's really beautifully written um slightly overwritten i would say but that's intentional because our main character is actually a writer and not only is he a writer he's also a um basically he's really interested in the origins of words and he writes books about words and so his dialogue is very wordy and he chooses like interesting ways of describing things um which gives this book a really um kind of lush theatrical tone which I do really enjoy although it does take a little bit longer to read because obviously it's using quite a lot of um, unusual words in its description um, but yeah I've been really enjoying this one so far and I can't wait to carry on with it such a cool concept and um, really beautifully written and lots of um, philosophical questions as well about um, what it means to be alive um, about the human condition and all of those things so it's also quite a juicy read so yeah really really enjoying this one so far um, and then I also just wanted to share some book mail with you because I was lucky enough to receive a package this morning so this is oh my goodness Gardens of the Moon by Stephen Erickson I have wanted to read this series for so long but I've just been super intimidated by it because they're all very chunky books and it's a pretty long series and it's a adult fantasy that is known to be fairly dense. Um, apparently it's one of those series that you either love or hate and I don't know, I've just always felt like maybe I'm not clever enough <laughs> to read this series, which is silly. I should just try it. Um, but the more that I've heard about it, the more that I think it would actually be something that I would really enjoy. And I recently got chatting to my fiance's brother who has read this series or is reading the series and really enjoys it. And our conversation basically convinced me to go ahead and pick this up and to actually start this series. So yeah, I'm super excited to finally delve into this series. I am a little bit intimidated. It is super thick and the writing is so tiny in here. But um, yeah, I'm very, very intrigued and I'm really hoping that I'm going to find a new favourite fantasy series here and that it's going to be giving me what I've been craving because at the moment I feel like I've been reading a lot of very average fantasy and I don't know, I guess I've just been a little bit bored by the genre and I'm really hoping that this will be a real new angle to fantasy and a breath of fresh air and something that I can just really get stuck into and I'm hoping that I am going to be a fan, um, a Malazan fan because this is the Malazan fantasy series and I know that it has a huge fan base so I'm really really hoping that I'm going to jump on board and fall in love with this world as much as so many other people seem to so yeah super excited for that. Anyway, I am going to chill, drink my coffee, read a little bit more of my book and then see where the day takes me. Hey guys.
guys, so I have just popped in quickly because it was super loud outside, there's loads of traffic going by so it's kind of hard to talk to you, but I just wanted to read you just the first couple of paragraphs of this book because I feel like if anything is going to sell you on this book it's going to be the first couple of paragraphs because as soon as I started reading this one I was like right, I am in, <laughs> so I just wanted to share it with you. Um, so it says, it's getting harder and harder to tell the living from the dead. Most of the remaining awakened lay sprawled on the asphalt of Birchin Lane, six stories below my balcony. Down there, everything's akimbo, heads flop, tongs loll, and mouths are corkscrewed holes. Some are still ambulatory and stagger round in unsprung circles, clawing air. Others sit mannequin still among the rubble, staring up at me from their laps, eyes blazing. They sacrificed another sleeper last night, some poor chump in Birkenstock who's now lashed up to a lamp post across the street by blood-stained bungee cords. The head, as always, has been painted lollipop yellow. I mean, if that doesn't grab your attention, I don't know what will. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you in case you want to pick this one up. I recommend that you do. Hey everyone, so it is much later and I am just packing things up ready to take back to Cheshire. If you don't know, I am kind of in between two places at the moment. We are in the process of selling our house in Norfolk and we're moving up to Cheshire to be closer to my fiance's family. And we're kind of up and down <laughs> every couple of weeks. Um, so it's all a little bit chaotic, but I'm just packing some things up and I wanted to just grab a couple of books from my shelves that I think I might fancy reading over the next couple of weeks or month or whatever um, and I saw these two books and I'm just going to pop them in my bag because I think these are going to be perfect for autumn. The first one is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chocksky. I think this is like a gothic haunted um, kind of creepy and lyrically written story so that sounds really really atmospheric and then I'm also thinking of this one because the cover just looks very autumny to me. This is The Book That Wouldn't Burn written by Mark Lawrence. Um, I don't know a huge amount about this one other than it is a fantasy that's set in a library um, and that's honestly all I need to know so yeah I'm going to be packing that one with me as well so I've got those in my bag and yeah I read a little bit more of this one today um, I'm now up to page 79 and I'm still really enjoying this one the only thing I would say is that our main perspective is kind of negative <laughs> it, they're quite um yeah like they have a very tainted view of humanity and their opinion is that what is happening to society at the moment is just kind of bringing out um, the kind of true essence of humans which is basically just negative stuff. It's all pain and chaos and um, our main character thinks that all of that was kind of masked by society and the events that have happened, this big global um, you know phenomenon that's happened has just kind of broken that surface and has just revealed what's been lurking underneath and it's just kind of quite depressing so I'm really hoping that their perspective changes throughout this book but I'm still finding it really really interesting really well written and also really creepy and kind of scary so yeah I'm still really enjoying this one and it's also like nice and quick to get through as well so I think I'll probably finish this one tomorrow um because I've been packing and doing bits today and I still managed to read a decent chunk so Yes, that is going in the bag as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna pack up the car now and get on the road. And I will be reading a audiobook on the drive. I'm actually reading the third Dresden Files book. Can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but we started it on the journey down and yeah, I'll talk to you a little bit more about that perhaps tomorrow when I've got a bit more time. But yeah, we will be continuing on with that during the drive. So yeah, I'll speak to you about that a little bit later.
everyone. So it is now the next day. I don't think I've spoken to you yet today, um, so I thought I'd better turn the camera on. But I've had a really productive day. You know when you have those days where you kind of just have a total reset, you get all of those annoying bits done. That's exactly what my day has been today. I've repotted plants that have needed repotting for like ages. I've hoovered, I've done several rounds of washing, I've filmed, edited and uploaded a video for my channel which should already be up by the time you're watching this and it's just been a really good productive day. Um, I have also squeezed in a little bit of reading so I am making my way through Nod, I'm now up to page 100 and this is so good, it's really really creepy, I feel like everything is starting to go way wrong um, at this point in the book, you know, obviously we had the opening scene, we had the um, the setting introduced to us, the fact that, you know, there's this uh, global insomnia that's happened, um, but each chapter, I think, is like another day since most people have slept, um, and we're up to like day seven now, so um, everybody is losing their grip on reality, you know, everything has basically just gone completely tits up, you know, the shops have been ransacked for food, um, everything's at a standstill, um, phones aren't working anymore, there's no water and, you know, there's lots of violence and this has got quite a lot of graphic scenes in it as well, so do check out content warnings before going into this one, but yeah, everything is just building and escalating and it's just such an addictive read and the chapters are quite nice and short as well, so yeah, I've been thoroughly enjoying this one. And then I just wanted to let you know that in the car on the way up here, I did read um, or listen to um, Grave Peril, I think is what it's called, which is book three in the Dresden Files series, which is a really big, kind of really classic um, fantasy series. It's got a huge cult following and um, it's one that I've been intimidated by. Um, my fiance Danny actually really really enjoys this series. He's basically read all of the books and he is the one that convinced me to start this series and I read the first book, I think it was last year, and I didn't love it to be honest with you. I thought it was very average and there were also a lot of things that just really annoyed me. Um, I'll see if I can link a video where I talked about it in more depth for you if you're interested to hear my thoughts. Um, but yeah, but that kind of put me off the series and Danny kept saying I'll get so much better and he basically advised me to skip out book two and to just jump in at book three because apparently the author's writing really matures from book three and it becomes much more of a epic series rather than um, sort of standalone stories from book three if that makes sense. I think the world really opens up um, and so finally I accepted <laughs> and I decided to listen to book three on audio and I've actually been really enjoying it. I think mostly <laughs> because it is narrated by James Masters and he is such a fantastic narrator. He really acts out the part and the books are all narrated uh, or told from the perspective of the main character Harry Dresden who is a wizard who lives in Chicago, he's like one of the only practicing wizards left in the city and um, he really gives that character life and it's so entertaining listening to the audiobook. So if you're looking for an audiobook recommendation I definitely would suggest checking that one out and yeah I definitely feel like the author's writing in this third book is a lot better. Some of the issues that I had with the first book aren't quite as evident in this third book and the whole story has definitely gripped me a lot more than the first book. Um, this one feels much more creepy. It um, has like a ghosty story to it. So basically Harry Dresden, he is a wizard. He's also a detective. So whenever something occurs that the police can't really explain and they think it might have some supernatural origins to it, they contact Harry Dresden to help them solve what's going on, basically. So it's kind of like a noir, but a fantasy noir. And in this particular story, um, there have been a lot of issues with hauntings. So basically something is rattling up the ghosts within uh, Chicago and 
uh, there's been more aggressive um, ghost activity within the city and our main character of Dresden, he is trying to get to the bottom of why that is. And um, it's just, it's really spooky and creepy. And there's actually been quite a lot of like quite disturbing and violent scenes, um, which I weirdly enjoy. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a real pleasant surprise and I'm looking forward to continuing on with this book and potentially this series. We'll see how it ends. Hey everyone, it is the next day. Um, my camera battery actually died the last time I was filming a clip, so I'm sorry if there was a really like janky transition into this clip. Um, but anyway, it's the next day and I wanted to give you a bit of an update. It is so warm today and it's really confusing my brain because I'm really wanting to get like cozy and autumnal and I've been like slowly getting out like autumn decorations and things to put up around our little annex. Um, but then it's also super super hot and so that just makes me want to enjoy like all things summer. I don't know, I'm just... I'm not sure where I'm at at the moment, but it's okay. We're gonna make the most of the nice weather while we can, um, hence me being outside. Um, and yeah, I did quite a bit more reading last night. Um, so I'm up to page 213. So I'm very close to the end of this book. I think I've only got about 60 pages left. And how do I talk about this book? This is such a difficult one because this is absolutely not going to be for everybody and it is really gruesome like the author goes there and please 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 check out content warnings before going into this one if you are sensitive to anything um because it's really difficult to read at times there's a lot of very traumatic things that happen and it's incredibly disturbing but at the same time i can't look away like i'm just so intrigued by this concept it's a it's a horror story that is unlike anything that i've read from before and so i've just been absolutely racing through it wanting to find out what's going on wanting to see it through to the end um so yeah it's been an incredibly addictive read for me the only thing that i would say is that the author or the narrator of this story does tend to go off on quite a lot of tangents i think because um, they are a lover of words, that's what they study, and um, they do tend to sort of like go off on a little spiel about various words and things, which can make the pacing feel a little bit funny, um, so it does kind of ebb and flow with the pacing of the story, and I think that's something that not everyone is going to get along with, and the only other thing that I would say is it's quite depressing. <laughs> this book, our main character has a real depressing outlook on humanity and the world and there's quite a lot of like philosophical discussions in here that are all just really quite depressing so I feel like you have to be in the right headspace to go into this one um I'm definitely going to be reaching for something a lot lighter once I finish this book um yeah it's been such an interesting read and yeah I guess we'll see how the story ends I've only got 60 pages left so I'm going to sit out here in shade because it's too hot in the sun and um finish this one off and i guess i'll chat to you once i finished So it is the next day and I just wanted to jump on here and give you an update because last night I did end up finishing Nod and I feel like I just needed like a night to just process this book because it's not like anything that I've read before. I really enjoyed it for that reason because it was so different but I also found it a really difficult read because it's really heavy. <laughs> 
The narrator has a really pessimistic and negative view of humanity and of the world and you know it's a book about the world ending essentially and there being some people who are kind of forced to watch as things start to crumble around them and that's a pretty you know heavy topic to be discussing um, but there really is no lightness in this book um, it's all pretty dark um, and I also found it just quite a slow paced read, like it's not very long and it did take me a couple of days to get through. And I think that's partly because of the writing style because I think I mentioned before that the narrator tends to go off on a bit of a tangent, but it does read kind of like, um, just like babbling. <laughs> like, you know, someone who just gets carried away and is just like kind of running away with their thoughts. It kind of reads a little bit like that because it's all told from one perspective. It is our main character literally writing down in a journal everything that's happened to him since there was this global catastrophe and um yeah so it's kind of hard to follow for that reason um but at the same time i just feel like there's a lot to unpack with this novel and i just really want to reread it at some point and annotate it because i feel like it needs like studying if that makes sense uh, there are some really like interesting quotes and just lots of really interesting concepts in here and um, what i will say is that i really enjoyed the author's note at the end it was really really interesting because the author kind of talks about how he has become aware that he had a very pessimistic outlook essentially he kind of calls himself out on that and says you know that um you know he's he's had a little bit of a change of 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 um, opinions in recent years. Um, it also talks a lot about how this novel reflects a lot of what he has been going through which is really interesting because he wrote this novel before um, he got a diagnosis of um, a brain tumour and it's just really odd that the piece of writing that he produced before he got that diagnosis really resonates with how he has been experiencing his time since getting that diagnosis if that makes sense i feel like basically just pick this up and read the author's note because it's actually really interesting um so yeah strange book would i recommend it if you like pain <laughs> no it is a really interesting book but it is a little bit of a slog and i do think you have to be in the right mind set for it. That being said, it's 100% going to be a book that I'm going to think about for a really, really long time. It's definitely going to stick with me and some of the scenes are just living in my brain right now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, for that reason, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then since then, I picked up a new book. So I've been reading this one today. This is a House with Good Bones, written by T. Kingfisher. Um, I picked this one up in my lunch break and have read a little bit since finishing work. Um, I'm up to page 54, and this is a, I think it's a horror, but it reads quite lighthearted, um, as does a lot of T. Kingfisher's works, but um, it's a, a book about a woman, a 32-year-old woman, who goes back to her home where her mum lives, um, because her work basically got cancelled or something so she's got a couple of weeks where she's essentially um, not able to go back to her flat because she's already given notice to her friends and yada yada. Basically she ends up moving back into her childhood home and her childhood home used to belong to her grandmother before she passed away and when she arrives back at her home things are different and it's all a little bit weird there's like a vulture that's like hanging around outside her house and when she walks in her mum has redecorated the whole place in the style that her grandmother used to like it which is really weird because her mum like one of the first things she did when um, her grandmother passed and the house went to her um, was that she redecorated and she painted all of the walls bright colours because she loves colourful things um, but now uh, our main character has gone back home and all the walls are like whitewashed and it's all gone back to how things were and it's all a little bit odd and um, yeah that's about as far as I've got so far 50 pages in um, I'm expecting weird creepy stuff to start happening um, but yeah this is a really easy book to fly through I think especially compared to this one uh, the writing is just so digestible and I've just been absolutely racing through the pages and I really enjoy um, T. Kingfisher's characters and the humour that she brings um, through the dialogue um, so yeah really enjoying this one so far 
And I guess the only other update is that I have been slowly chipping away through Dresden Files, Grave Peril. Um, I listened to a little bit of the audiobook last night with my fiance. Um, and I think we've only got about an hour left of that book. And as before, really, I've not got much more to add, but I've been really enjoying listening to James Masters and his narration for the book. He really adds a lot of character to the um, the protagonist of Harry Dresden and I'm also really enjoying how there's a lot more world building in this one. It definitely feels like the author is really fleshing out the world. He's also introduced us to some new characters. There's one character in particular called Michael who's particularly interesting. He's kind of like a um, he has like faith magic, he's a really religious man and he wields this kind of magic sword which is believed to have a chip of the cross that Jesus died on in it um, and yeah his, his magic all stems from his like ridiculous faith that he has in God and I, I don't know he's a really cool character um, so yeah I've been enjoying that one surprisingly <laughs> and I think that's all the updates I have for you. This has probably been quite a long video already, so I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, do let me know in the comment section if you like this kind of vlog style video, because I'm never 100% sure. <laughs> so please let me know if you enjoy this and I will film some more um, chilled vlogs like this. Um, but yeah, I hope you're all doing very, very well. Um, don't forget to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more from me. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next time with another video. Bye.